I started playing guitar in the early 90s, and if you did too, I think you're really going to enjoy this video. Whenever you started playing guitar, maybe it was 50 years ago, maybe it was yesterday, there must be some fundamental riffs that made you want to play guitar. Here are mine. My life completely changed when I was 12 and I was sitting on the back of the school bus. I had recently befriended the new weird kid at school, and he'd lent me a cassette tape of his favorite band. Scrawled on this battered-looking tape were the words In Utero and Nirvana. So I popped it into my Walkman, sat back, looked out of the window, pressed play, and then I heard this. I had never heard anything like that before, and I immediately wanted more. And by the time those 41 minutes and 21 seconds were up, I was alive for the first time in my life. And I knew what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to be a guitar player. So I started to teach myself by asking anyone that was playing guitar, how do you do that? Or trying to noodle along with the radio. And eventually I figured out the very first thing I ever learned to play on guitar. <laughs> Of course, it didn't sound like that, it sounded like this. And now I had to jump the first hurdle and I wanted more. And this is how we get to the first real song that I ever learned on guitar from start to finish. Wild Thing by The Trogs. <laughs> With several open chords under my belt and my confidence soaring, I began to form bands with friends at school and I finally got to play my first Nirvana songs. However, I couldn't play bar chords yet, so we mainly focused on the songs with easy riffs. The first, of course, being Come As You Are. <laughs> Now that I was playing Nirvana, I was extremely motivated, but not very good at teaching myself. But someone showed me two finger power chords. And yes, we butchered Smells Like Teen Spirit multiple times per band practice after that. But my dream was not to play Nevermind. My dream was to find out how to play track three from In Utero. No matter what I did, I couldn't seem to get my guitar to make the notes that Kurt did until I discovered tab books. To be precise, this tab book. And if listening to In Utero showed me the way to playing guitar, this tab book blew the doors off because I now discovered dropped D tuning. Technically dropped D flat tuning, but we won't go into that. Now, armed with this, I could finally play Heart Shaped Box. <laughs> These tab books became my Bibles, and even though I didn't speak its language, music became accessible to me. Up until this point, I'd only been playing this, my first guitar. This is a Hona LX90 Strat copy, and I was playing this through my Squire practice amp. In 1994, my hero, Kurt Cobain, died. But a week after his death, a band came along that changed everything in my life. Like Nirvana, they were moody, they were cool, they played simple things on guitar, but the songs were great. They were Oasis. And their debut single, Supersonic, helped me deal with the loss of my hero, and I began to mend that Nirvana-shaped hole in my heart. <laughs> Thank you. 
Shortly after Definitely Maybe came out, I was playing gigs in pubs with my band, and we decided to cover this, and that included the guitar solo. And I had never played a real guitar solo in front of an audience before. And I'll never forget the members of a rival band coming up right to my feet as my solo was approaching and looking at me. And of course, I fluffed it. So Paul and Josie, if you're watching, this is for you. For those shows, I'd moved on from the Strat copy and the Tiny Squire amp and bought an H and H VS Musician, which is kind of like a Roland Jazz Chorus, massive and clean as heck. So I had to get some pedals, and I found two used ones: a Frontline Wah and this DoD FX fifty B Overdrive Plus. And I thought that was all I would ever need. Ah, to be young and naive. This is actually a great point to talk about this video's sponsor, Walrus Audio, in particular, their fundamental series of pedals. This new affordable range of pedals covers most of the effects a guitar player needs, and Walrus Audio wanted to make something that would keep you covered from your first band practice to a sold out arena. They're priced at around £95 to £125, and to put that in perspective, I paid £40 for this DoD pedal used in the late 90s. And if you calculate for inflation, the Fundamental series would have cost about £45 back then. So the price checks out. If you want more information on the Fundamental series, there are links to them in the video description, including up to date pricing. Right, back to the riffs. In 1995, I saw a music video on MTV that absolutely blew my mind, and not even my moody teenage angst could defend itself against this infectious pop punk. The power of the presidents of the United States of America and their song, Peaches. <laughs> In fact, up to this point in my life, I think I may have played the Peaches riff more than any other riff in the world. And that's saying something. I still had major love for everything Nirvana, but now I saw that making music could also be fun, and it was okay to jump around on stage and have a good time and mess about with your friends. So, a summer later, I went on holiday with a guitar playing friend, and he knew stuff that I didn't, because his dad was a bass player and it was him that taught me what I would call my first complicated riff, Day Tripper by The Beatles. <laughs> This riff is still one of my favorites today. It's melodic, but it's also kind of a finger exercise, and the Beatles played it and sang at the same time. Not long after that, I went to the band rehearsal of my keyboard player's dad's band, and that night I got my first ever real taste of gas, although it didn't have a name back then. We just said we wanted stuff. Anyway, John the guitar player, the cool dad, had just got a real Gibson Les Paul, and I had never been this close to one ever before. And it wasn't just the looks, it was the sound, and there was this one song in particular that I will never forget hearing at that band practice, because I hadn't heard the actual band play it. The actual band was Ocean Colour Scene, and the song is the Riverboat song. <laughs> That sound and that riff and that groove, it, it made me feel cool. And it was a simple riff as long as you got the feeling. It also had a lead line right at the beginning of the song 
that pushed my boundaries as a player. And it goes like this. Now, I had a little job at this point, and that meant that I could afford guitar magazines. And I realized there was a whole world of music and gear out there that could be had in exchange for money. So, after playing gigs and persuading my parents, I finally got my dream. A 100 watt Marshall amplifier. And that's what I've been playing through this whole video. Also, this guitar is my late 90s Epiphone SG, which was kind of inspired by that wine red Les Paul, which I did get to play, by the way, and I just found it too heavy with all my jumping around and pop punking about. So that's why I went for the SG, also inspired by Kelly Jones of the Stereophonics. And since then, this guitar has seen many, many shows. So even though I still love this SG and I still love that Marshall and I still love this DoD pedal, we are living in a golden era of gear and information. But with that inspiration and a reason to play, it's all useless. It's my hope that this video will inspire you should you ever feel like you're not getting the joy out of guitar that you used to. So my advice is to go back to what made you start in the first place. Go back to your fundamental riffs. Let me know what your fundamental riffs are in the comments section. And if you want more from me in the future, there's the subscribe button. Big thanks to Walrus Audio, and I will see you in the next one.